In recognition of the role of traditional medicine in health development in Africa, heads of states and governments back in 2003 at a summit in Maputo, Mozambique, endorsed the Institute of the African Traditional Medicines Day. This is to advocate and create more awareness since it is believed that 80% of the African population use traditional medicine for their healthcare needs. But this particular practice has come under serious scrutiny with many questioning efficacy of drugs, lack of laboratory testing and application of dosage and even qualification of most of the practitioners themselves. Yet, a large population of Africans, especially Nigerians, are relying on traditional medicine to cater for their health needs. On the spot this week, delves into the nitty gritty of this field with uh, someone who has practiced uh, the profession for about 40 years. Stay with us. Now, my guest is an African traditional medicine practitioner, holistic healing and acupuncture. He holds a master's degree in uh, Unani Medicine, India, from World Federation of Acupuncture Institute, Beijing, and a PhD in African Traditional Medical Science from University of Kolkata. He has served as Executive Secretary, Yobe State Board of uh, Traditional Medicine, and National President of African Traditional Medicine Practitioners. He is said to have discovered an antidote and herbal medicine for curing COVID-19 and has set up a school that was diploma in Africa and Chinese traditional medicine. On the spot is founder and chief executive officer, MIJ College of Traditional Medicine, Damatro Yobe State, and founder proposed MIJ University of Traditional Medical Science, Damatro uh, Yobe State, Nigeria. Professor Mohammed Ibrahim Jawa. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, let me just go straight to the one that I found very critical. It's okay. The discovery of COVID-19 cure. We heard about it yeah. when the COVID-19 was up, and then after a while, we're no longer hearing anything. What's going on there? Yeah. You know, COVID-19 issue... Uh, according to our understanding, we traditional medicine practitioners is a, a mere politics. That's our understanding. But uh, all the same. Sorry, you say a mere politics. It's a mere politics. But you you discovered some cure. Yeah, the cure of COVID nineteen eh, has been politicized. Okay. Politicized, and those that have access to audience happen to be the champions of all. So Africa, not Nigeria alone, but we learn of Madagascar and the president of Madagascar himself announced to the world that they have a cure for COVID-19. And here with the demand from our government here in Nigeria, not me alone, but many traditional medicine practitioners develop uh, a remedy to COVID-19 and its cure, not treatment of symptom or uh, uh, supplementing uh, treatment of COVID-19 from other source. But our claim is we cure COVID-19. Now the issue is how the, some of the question that uh, people ask is how do we discover medicine for something which we have not seen. Because in traditional medicine, we, we don't have laboratory. We cannot isolate the virus. We cannot study the characteristics of the virus in laboratory. So they are thinking we cannot pro have anything, a remedy to COVID-19. But that is not uh, African traditional medical science. In African traditional medical science, we use the pathogenic factor 
And for us to know the pathogenic factor, we look at the organ affected. And also we add the clinical features presented. Automatically we got what we can handle to cure that particular disease. And this has been practiced from our ancestors. They look at the organ affected in the body, they study the clinical features, and they find the remedy, and it will go exactly against the pathogenic factor of that particular disease. So uh, the so-called conventional scientists are thinking that we have to go through their process before we ascertain a disease condition and before we develop a treatment for it. While it's not, because approach of traditional medicine anywhere in the world is a holistic approach and the aim is to balance the body, to strengthen the body where the body will fight the foreign substance and the body will cure it itself. Okay, but uh, let me come in here. Yeah. If, if you don't subject this to testing, mm. an assessment, mm. before you can apply this, how do you expect the World yeah, that, Health Organization the pro, to come yeah, and that is, agreed on that? So okay, that is the testing. irony. That is only what people know. Testing in the laboratory is what people know. But not knowing that traditional medicine practitioners have some skill that can easily establish diagnosis and wheresoever you go, you will find it exactly how it is. The science of traditional medicine is quite different from the conventional laboratory sciences we are having. That we object things and we use some uh, uh, high-powered visionary substance to view it. Or we use some reaction to ascertain the reaction of a particular system. Traditional medicine practitioners, anywhere in the world, not only in Nigeria, Africa, anywhere in the world, traditional medicine practitioners know the physiology of the body, know the temperament of the organ in the whole body. And all parts of the body, the cells that make up the body, are of different temperament. And any disease that is coming, into human being or any pathogenic factor that will harm a human body must have opportunity of digression of temperament of that particular organ. The same thing in conventional medicine. When the acid-base balance has been deranged, definitely the organs will not function well. And if the organs are not functioning well, automatically there's going to be sickness. But in traditional medicine, we look at the body and also the temperament of the body, the cells that make up a tissue, the cells that make up an organ, the cells, the cells that make up a system. We always give example with respiratory system. In respiratory system, we said the disease is common cold. For instance, kata. If somebody is having kata, automatically they will say it's common cold. Why do you call it cold? If the sickness is induced by acid, if the sickness is induced by dust, if the, uh, the, the sickness is induced by uh, maybe strong wind hmm? or pepperish environment that caused that sneezing, you still call it common cold. Why do you call it cold? No, you, they you... don't know. Okay. They don't know it. They don't know the reason. But in traditional medicine, we have already established that respiratory system is a cold system. And if you ask, why is it cold system? We say because it is dealing with air. And air, temperament of air is cold. And as a result, any disease that is affecting this is a cold syndrome. We call it in traditional medicine. In conventional medicine, they don't have this. So they go into individual particular disease, either bronchi, they call it bronchitis, pneumonia, asthma, and all what have you. But in our own case, we look at the whole system, and we study the symptom of that system, we balance the system of respiratory system, and then you get cured. Okay, you talk about cells, understanding the cells and so on. Mm. Without laboratories, mm. without the equipment, how do you now assess a cell, okay. the situation with the cell? Okay, now automatically we know that body is built up of eh, something. 
And that is the minus something we can say. In every language in Africa, they have a name of minute substance that make up a tissue. They know it in Africa. Not that they don't know. And it's not because of coming of the European, I mean colonial masters, that we learn the name of things. We know name of things even before eh, the colonization. So they know what is that smaller substance that make up the body. And in their understanding, they say this substance must have different temperament. So far, they function differently. I've given you an example of a respiratory system, which is, we call it a cool temperament system. But if you go to a uh, circulatory system, for instance, the heart, temperament of the heart is hot. Why is it hot? Because it is dealing with blood. And in assessment based on traditional medicine understanding, blood is very strong and is hot because it energizes, it gives power to somebody, it nourishes the body. So it is temper temperament is hot. Now, based on this, we know that the cells that make up heart a hot temperament cell. Not only hot temperament alone, this combination, but the higher percentage of cells that make up the heart is a hot temperament cell. That is the argument. They make it in this way so that they can be able to study the temperament of that organ and diseases of that organ. But in the study of either cool or hot, they go down to say that this particular system or organ in the body is cool but is a dam because it has moisture. And then they go down to say this organ is completely dry, uh, uh, cool but dry cool like respiratory system. Respiratory system will consider it as a dry cool organ because it is dealing with air and air is dry. Any time there is excess fluid in the respiratory system, it becomes a sickness in, uh, in, the, in that particular system. And the same thing when you go into the gastrointestinal system. When you, you go into um, uh, kidney and urinary system, the same thing. The study is very long and people need to go to school to study it. Because you can't just get it of head. And because you know anatomy and physiology in conventional medicine will never give you the idea of temperament system in the traditional medicine. Okay, let's go to... So, so let me go back okay. to... Mm. Uh, I'm, the, I'm interested in knowing what happened to that discovery you made. Yeah, yeah. So, so in this discovery, we were able to prove that the organ, uh, the, the pathogenic factor that caused COVID-19 Eh? has a specific temperament. And it cannot survive in a certain environment because of the change in that temperament. So that is the study we took to develop our own substance. But to them, they need to measure it based on the conventional medicine parameters, which will never be the same because we are using temperamental theory while they are using other, another theory. So we were able to prove it. We experimented on those that are interested. That is the position of traditional medicine in our land today, because no conventional or uh, public institution would refer a patient to traditional medicine practitioner. During the COVID Even period, now, were you, able to there is, eh? were you able to treat some people? Yes, we COVID? treat a lot of people. And people on their own, from the medical side, eh? The medical doctors, uh, the nurses, uh, laboratory scientists all patronize us. We make a lot of sales eh? and we make a lot of treatment in that particular period of COVID-19. And in fact, three, four days, uh, you just forget about it and you go on your way. But the problem is we don't have a system here that will promote us officially. So we suffered, they invited us several times to defend. Like Minister of Science and Tech invited us more than four times just to come and defend so that they will have something to say. But after our defense, those that will go and say something about it are the conventional medicine practitioners. They don't understand our language. They don't understand the science we are using. The theory we are using is very, very new to them. 
So there's no way they can promote it beyond what we have said there. Obviously, so, that's a huge gap yes. in terms of understanding. Yeah. Now, you, apart from this particular, you yourself have come up with a lot of discovery. Yeah. And then other uh, traditional uh, medicine practitioners, practitioners have equally come up with a lot yeah. of this thing. Yeah. So it's this lack of understanding now. Mm. Mm. How much of a challenge is it there now? The challenge is for us Africans. WHO have done their own. And those at the helm of affairs of WHO as of the time they said Africa should go back and develop their traditional medicine are not Africans. But they understand and they are so sincere to us Africans that you have your own medicine. You have your own peculiar diseases and social life. Go back and develop your own system of medicine so that it will take care of your health need. We are resisting up to now. Those that study uh, conventional medical science are looking at going back there is so primitive. While they are not up to that, because none of them has ever discovered any system of treatment that we in Africa will adapt. It's okay. We will still continue with uh, the challenges of uh, African traditional medicine after okay. the short break. So thank you. We'll back soon. Okay, we'll take a break now and return shortly. Don't go away. NTA. Set standards based on current broadcast realities while consolidating. Welcome back to On The Spot. We are discussing Africa traditional medicine. Now, before we went on the break, yeah. we were talking about some of the challenges. Yeah. A lot of you have come up with discovery, yeah. and then we are struggling to get even national and international recognition, yeah. WHO, to, yeah. to uh, certify your discoveries. Yeah. Many yeah. believe it's a kind of a conspiracy. Do you also hold that conviction? Yeah. You hold that conviction that it's a cons there's a conspiracy against uh, the traditional African practitioners? Yeah. Uh, generally, when we look at African development today, compared to other parts of the world, where they strive and liberate themselves from the Western world and they develop, and in traditional medicine, we always mention of China and India. Because they have gone back, they throw everything. Not that they are not in that conventional science. They are far ahead of us in that conventional science because they make a lot of discovery. And then secondly, they go back and develop what is their own, and they are proud of it. The big challenge we are having is we don't understand that we have something to offer. This is the big challenge. And those that understood exactly we have something to offer cannot finance the program. And secondly, those at the helm of affairs in health sector are those that from conventional medical science. And they feel, and, and it's natural with human beings, that if you will allow somebody in that bush, promote him to, to the highest level, that he will be attending to 1,000 patients in his own small hut eh, in the village and curing them, then what are they going to do? What are they? The CMDs, eh? Eh, the consultants in that field. But the case is not like that. I study in China. I study four years program in China. And I did my practical in Donzi Men Hospital in central Beijing. Conventional medical practitioners are doing their job. 
they are making a lot of breakthrough in research and also the traditional Chinese medicine are doing their own and in the same hospital. And nobody is looking down upon anybody. But in our own, we feel that as long as we are here, we don't need anybody to come. That is the big challenge. I'm saying this because I belong to that group too. Perhaps there could be um, a kind of, just as you are saying, mm. we have a regulatory body, mm. NAVDAC. Mm. I remember in 20, 2012, NAVDAC set up a, an expert committee to, for verification of some of the discoveries. Mm. Now, are you, are you subjecting your findings mm. to this so that they can have some degree of a verification? Yeah. So perhaps you yourself, you mm. the practitioners themselves, are not equally submitting yourself to the regulatory body so that they, you can get that certification from. Yeah, them. which is very, very important. We all agree with this. But the point is, who developed that parameter of verification? Who developed it? Is it the traditional medicine practitioners or the conventional health practitioners? You can work together to have a collaboration. I'm, present. I'm talking of the present status now. Is developed by the conventional traditional medicine practitioners. You get the point. And the parameter will never go with traditional medicine completely. There's no way based on what NAVDAG is doing that you assess traditional medicine and you promote it. One of the, I remember uh, uh, Paul he, oh he that's the former NAVDAG boss. Yeah. Uh, he spoke about, he said one of the major challenges of traditional African medicine is that quackery and um, counterfeit medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, <laughs> People just come up and say they are with advisories, uh, advice, other advice that um, they can cure this one, one medicine can cure 10 uh, diseases mm. and so on. You don't even know their level of qualification. You don't know where they're coming from. Mm. How did you start your own practice okay. yourself? And then what, how much of this is, you, you in that field, you yeah. need to control this. Yeah, but the major challenge is from the government. If there's no regulation, and if there's no law backing, first of all, not to recognize even traditional medicine practice in Nigeria is not there. We have only policy in the Federal, Federal Ministry of Health. That policy was developed 2007, and it has been reviewed now, recently reviewed and, 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 and validated. But yet, up to now, it, it, it didn't become a policy in, in, in Nigeria up to now because uh, 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 it has to go through all the process. So with these kind of things, with our uh, legislation, there's no way you will avoid quackery. And it's very difficult for you to get the best practitioners. You can't get them because there are always those that not eat better uh, at home. They will not come and be shouting all, all over. But those that need money will buy vehicles, will go to media, will do all this, and they will be advertising themselves. Eh? And these are the, what Nigerians are consuming. And I'm not saying that there's no quackery, but government allow this to happen. If government need to sanitize and improve the health of the population of Nigeria, government should come in and establish a body regulating that practice. That body will be given power. If you are, you are not qualified, you will not even come up with advert or whatsoever. That is the issue. Because all the other fields have regulatory body okay that's the key thing regulatory yes. body yeah thank you very much yes. professor mohammed ibrahim jawal founder and chief executive officer mij college of traditional medicine uh damaturu uh yobe state thank you very thank much. you so much for your thank time you thank much. you for thank you. your perspective thank you and thank you to viewer for your time we will see you on the next episode goodbye i'm joseph Uten. Yeah.